On this week's episode of The Focus, we'll take you to Spike's Sugar Shack in Plymouth and learn how to make sugar on snow. Then, Jamie Sharps of Ashland stops by our studio to talk about the comedy horror films he's produced. Lastly, we'll wrap up with a look at the upcoming season for four Plymouth Regional High School spring sports teams. It's Maple Month right now. At Spike's Shack of Sugar in Plymouth, New Hampshire, that means lots of visitors from all over New England who want to learn more about the sugaring process, or perhaps they just like the folksy ambience of a working sugar shack. Started, we went to breakfast and decided I had a few maple trees in the yard and bought a few taps and with steamer, cement blocks and a steamer pan in the driveway on the ground and um, made a couple three gallons that year and next year we built a little evaporator outside. Um, did a little better that year, we added some more taps here. In the past, we see like 50, 75 people a day on the open house weekends. This year, it's been slower. Sunday was crazy. There was a bunch of people Sunday. From all over Yeah, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. They we had people from Tennessee last weekend. We get people. Yep. Since we're on the website, they are able to look us up and you get, you get people who live right around here. You get people who um, live in the state and kind of make a pilgrimage every year. So they'll make up, they'll look on the website and pick out a number of sugar houses that they want to go to. And then we get random people from a long ways away that just want to find out about sugaring. And yeah, I got, a, I got a call last year, a, a family from India was going to be here during the week and tried and we put together something to do for them and, and, yeah. and that was interesting, they, a bunch of them. Yeah, that was quite a had crowd. people from Ethiopia too once, Yeah, a family of them. So, so you get to meet a lot of people, and they're all they're all excited, and it's fun. You never meet cranky people in the sugar house. Almost never. People are happy when they come here. Would you suggest maple sugaring is a way to get rich? No. <laughs> no. Not unless you have a lot of money to begin with. Oh, okay. If if you can, if you have a million dollars to invest in it, then yeah, you can make money at it. Um, but you need to buy the land, you need to spend a ton of money building infrastructure. And, um, but no, doing it the way we do it, you're never going to make any money. Well, I wouldn't say you're never going to make any money. We make enough money for the hobby to pay for itself. Kind of. And I'll, maybe a little bit more. And it's fun, it's worth it for us. You never know? pay you for your time. You'll never no. get that. How's the season? Fickle. Yes. We, get, we, we get a couple days of okay sap flow and then it freezes again for a week. And then we get a couple days of okay sap flow and then it freezes again for a week. Yeah, we we haven't done a big, a big, woohoo, hoo let's boil all night kind of thing. Yeah. Most of the boiling really gets done in this pan. Once the reverse osmosis machine is done, it pumps it out here to the tank outside. It's pumped through a filter into the tank up overhead. Sap flows into a giant copper coil in here, and the steam heats it before it comes in. The thermometer right now, the sap is coming into this pan at 190 degrees instead of the 40 degrees or whatever it is outside. Most of the boiling really gets done in this pan. It's a, a fluted pan. There's 16 flues that stick down 8 inches below the surface, the level of the bottom of the pan, multiplying the surface area that's exposed to the heat. If you look at this pan, with sections, zig, 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 zag, um, the water is denser than the sugar, so it's always pushing the sugar ahead of it. It forms a gradient. That's why we can put sap in one end and get syrup out the other end. It, it just keeps flowing in one direction. Once we draw it out of here, it's pretty much finished syrup. It goes through a filter into this big tank. And after a run or maybe two runs if they're small, when I get enough in here, that's when I check it with the hydrometer, make sure the density's right, make sure the sugar content's right. Then it gets filtered again. From here, it's finished syrup, and it goes out there, and then that's where we do the bottle. So that's the stage that we cook the syrup to when we're making maple cream. We, we bring it up to that temperature, which requires boiling it for a while because you have to get it really hot. Um, 
then you immediately take it off of the heat and let it sit we usually put it in an ice bath because we want to cool it down quickly and we don't want to jiggle it around because what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it form little tiny crystals and if you jiggle it around or you don't cool it properly it'll make big crystals and it'll be grainy and you won't have the lovely melty feel that you're going to notice when you when you taste it um, then once it's cooled down to room temperature we stir it now we used to do this by hand when we first started doing it and let me tell you it is not fun stirring a batch of maple cream it takes about an hour and it goes through stages where it gets really stiff and then you have like one person hold on to the bowl for you and you're stirring uh, a couple years ago we got an old KitchenAid mixer and we did it using a mixer um, that worked better but it still took an hour and then we finally went to using this maple cream machine which um, when, we've, when we've prepared the syrup we've cooled it we dump it into this funnel, we take out this lid, and we turn on the pump, and it circulates the syrup through here, and it basically, instead of stirring, it just goes through the pump, and the pump, the compression of the pump makes the um, conversion to cream happen much more quickly. It takes five to ten minutes. At Spike's Shack of Sugar, Maple Month also means scooping up pans full of snow in preparation for a local springtime tradition sugar on snow. This year there will be plenty of snow for this process. The whole experience makes one feel as though they are inside a curry and knives print. We used to have grade, a couple of grade A's and a grade B. Last year we changed our grading system in the U.S. to bring us in line with Canada and with Europe. So now we have all grade A. All of our syrups are grade A and they have both a color and a taste descriptor. So that's a change from previous years. And the way we do that is we take a grading kit. So every time that Spike boils and then he's filtered the product, he takes an empty grading bottle, he puts the product in it, puts the cap on, holds it up in natural light, and looks at which one of these grading samples it matches most closely. And that's how we grade it, simply by color. And then you look at the top and say, oh, it matched this one most closely. So that's A, amber, rich taste. And if it's darker than any of these three, then it's the dark, it's the very dark. So this last one, very dark, strong taste. Hello everybody, my name is Jamie Sharps. I'm an independent filmmaker from the little town of Ashland, New Hampshire. And I have been working on a vampire film called The Beaumonts. And it's a comedy horror, and I started shooting it back in June and we're just about done with it. It's uh, April now, and I'd say there's probably a, hopefully another three weeks left of shooting to go. Um, I just need to shoot the climactic action ending scene. But um, I'm really happy with it, and um, it's been going really well with all the actors, um, mostly all my friends who I coerced into acting in it. The story basically involves um, a family of four, a father vampire, the mother, and the son and daughter. They move into the little town of Sandwich, which um, there actually is a town called Sandwich, and uh, we both basically shot that there, and we shot a lot of it in Ashland and actually the town of Plymouth as well. And, but basically, um, it's about the family trying to fit into the little town, and it doesn't go well. And then there are uh, basically two vampire hunters um, are tracking them, and they find them, and chaos ensues. And um, they try to survive and, and uh, kill the other vampire hunters and there's a lot of ups and downs with the story but um, I think it's going to be really good. It's, 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 uh, it's about an hour and a half and I'm hoping to have a premiere at the Flying Monkey um, in October. So um, I'm hoping that um, we'll be able to do that um, around the time, around Halloween because it's a vampire film, but it's, it's a comedy as well. It's, it's gonna be a little comedy, a little horror, a little gore, a little blood. But I, I think it, it's gonna go well, and um, I had a premiere for my last film called Zombie Boy uh, back in 2015 at the Flying Monkey 2, and, and um, 
we filled every seat and it was so much fun. And hopefully we're going to spread the word and, and um, tell all the students at the college, at the University of Plymouth uh, to um, check it out and as well as all the people that live around here um, to be entertained and they thoroughly will be. My name is Justin Swirsky here with The Focus. Coming up next we're going to have previews for all four uh, sports teams. We have boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, softball and baseball. Right now we're going to head down to the boys lacrosse practice and see what they have to say. I think this year, well every year it's different. Um, you never quite resume at the same point. Everybody starts at the bottom of the mountain and um, within that process you're always kind of evaluating it and seeing who's stepping up and obviously it hurts to kind of lose uh, the players that we graduated, five good seniors, um, but every program is dealing with that so it's just a matter of kind of seeing who has matured, who's worked on their game and then from there just trying to put the puzzle piece together to uh, get the maximum output. Uh, well, we're doing a lot of back to the basics because uh, the last few years we had a couple of players who we could really rely on to carry the team, but it's a completely different team now. So stepping up left and right, like freshmen, sophomores, juniors, everybody's going to be playing a lot. So just from the bottom up, we're going to be improving everywhere. Uh, well, obviously this year is a lot of different team. So we're going to need everyone to step up this year. And everyone's going to be playing all new positions. Like I think we have... Two out of our three defensemen are, are gone, so we're going to need a whole new defense, whole new midi squad. It's, it's just going to be a lot different team, and everyone needs to step up this year, yeah. I mean, uh, we're certainly not the only ones in the state in the same boat that are dealing with snow and just kind of a sloppy spring. Um, but it's never an excuse. You know, you, you just make the best of the situation, and that has to be your attitude. Um, it's easy in life just to kind of uh, focus on the not-so-great aspects, but, you know, uh, you can always control your circumstances, but you can control your reaction, and that's what we're trying to do here. We lost a lot of key players. Uh, everyone's got to step up, freshmen, sophomores. We have freshmen playing right now with the varsity squad and just trying to implement things that we did last year much later in the season, much earlier, just so we can get those things down right now so we can do it later. Key, right on point. Uh, I see us in the semifinals again. We were there with Pelham last year. You know, we had a rough game, but uh, we beat Kearsarge uh, when we were the seventh seed. They were the two seed. So I see us up there at least semifinals again this year. As always, the goal is just to improve and kind of see where things take us. Um, you know, take advantage of the opportunities that are given to us. Um, prepare hard and focus because uh, Division Three. you know, there's a lot of talent and a lot of different teams that, you know, present different challenges. And so we're just looking to try and maximize the opportunity that is presented to us and um, really just kind of see where it takes us. Just simply improve is the goal as the season goes on. Perfect. Um, I love the sport. I absolutely love the sport. I love the girls and the position was open and it was just felt like the right time. Um, I've been probably here the longest through the beginning of it with Mo and Cowie and I've seen the growth of it and just wanted to keep with it. I've worked with them on the field hockey field. There's a lot of girls that work that have gone through the, uh, the school I work at on my field hockey team and they've just sort of transitioned in and they're just an amazing group of young ladies that have just the heart of, of the game and team work uh, sportsmanship. Um, I'm hoping to expect a lot of growth from this team. We had a really rough season last year, so it'd be nice to win a couple games this year. Maybe make tournament would be really awesome and just develop the program again. We have a lot of freshmen, so I think we're really going to be focusing on their skills and just building the program in general. Honestly, really excited because it is my senior year and I'm just really excited to get out there and start playing the games. And with the underclassmen, I think they're super skilled already and I think we are, you know, bonding a lot better. And I think just the games are going to go overall really well. So I'm super excited for that. Um, but yeah, just winning games would be <laughs> nice too. But um, so overall, I'm just like, super excited for the season. Um, it's been a challenge, but it's a fun challenge because it's New England. And um, you never know what the weather's going to throw at you. So we're all, every single sport across the state is in the same predicament. Um, and you just take what it is. When you find yourself inside forever, then you find different fun games just to do to do team building um, and keep the conditioning you know not quite so um, monstrous monotonous right. um, 
So, and it's fun. I mean, they're out, they're moving. We're stretching our legs today. We share it with the guys and just, it's good to feel the spring coming in. Um, but just keep the positive going because you know that around the corner we will have, you know, we'll have sun, we'll have warmth, and <laughs> we'll have black flies. <laughs> um, to better my play, my left hand somewhat more, um, ground balls, uh, as coming up as a captain, learning kind of what from previous captains, what that meant and what kind of roles and responsibilities I would be taking on. Um, I'm really just excited to lead the team in positivity and really keep that defense strong. That's what I play. So I'm hoping just to keep that strong in the back this year. I think uh, once we actually get on the field, we'll actually be able to connect a lot more. It has been tough with the weather, but overall, um, I think once we come together, it's going to end up being really well for the first game. So it should be good. I am so proud of these girls and where they're going to go is, I can't wait to just watch it. I'm going to have the best uh, sideline view at every game. Um, their heart's there, they're, they're fun, they're talented, um, and I really see the push that they're going to do. There's, they're going to be a, a force to be reckoned with. So, and especially the coming years with the numbers we have coming up, from what I hear at the Wolves level and just the ninth grade group that I have up to the tenth grade. I couldn't ask for anything better, especially my first year. I mean, to have this core group of girls is just fantastic. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, obviously our goal every year is to, um, you know, make the tournament. And uh, this year with a, a, a young team coming back uh, defensively, I, I think we need to, you know, improve on a pretty good defense that we had last year. Our pitching staff needs to do a little bit better job. Um, but we need to hit. We need to hit a lot better than we have in the past. Um, and I think if we do that, you know, we could be a pretty dangerous team coming coming through Division Two. Well, last season we uh, we really had good camaraderie, but um, this year I'm hoping we have a little more focus. It seemed like we were a little unfocused at times during last season. I'm really hoping that we uh, we do better on that this year. Last season we definitely had a little bit of trouble with our pitching, and um, and myself included, uh, we couldn't really get the bat on the ball. And I mean, we had a pretty good team last year, I thought personally, but we couldn't really pull away, you know. So I think we need to improve this year with the hitting and the pitching and uh, that this year. So. We're working on hitting this year and uh, really our uh, defense. Uh, we're going to bring the offense pretty hard. Uh, we've been working uh, a lot on hitting, so yeah. Uh, my goal for this season is to make sure I pull my weight pitching personally, and I don't really do much hitting, but uh, if I ever do have to be put in that situation, I can uh, help the team. I work every day with Coach Pogue. He's great. Uh, we're doing pitching mechanics, pickoff moves every single day. So. Uh, we just keep working at that, and we'll bring it this year. This season, I'm hoping to uh, have our team at least get a home playoff game. We haven't done that since my freshman year. and uh, But I really think we have the talent and the dedication this year to do it. So, You know, we're, I think we're, we're one of the more fortunate teams in the, in the division, or really the state. Um, you know, we have the opportunity to come down here and, and at least throw baseballs and, and hit a baseball in a cage um, rather than being in our high school gym where you know, we're not really capable of doing that stuff. So I, I, I would imagine we are probably one of the more uh, fortunate teams to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, you know, it could always be worse, but you know, this is baseball in New England. You know, I mean, last year we were out on the, uh, we were outside on the first day of practice. This year we might not be outside for the first game. We'll see. Um, you know, we just got to kind of take what comes at us and, and uh, you know, play the cards we're dealt. Uh, the girls got a, a lot of experience, the girls going to the Final Four last year, you know, and basically we lost, we did lose three seniors, but we replaced them with three great seniors this year, and, and so they've all been there. So I expect the experience is going to help. They know we got to work hard to get to where we want to go this year. We had a pretty strong team last year, but we lost a couple of key players that I feel comfortable with the new people that we've brought in. So I think that we are just as strong as we were last year, if not stronger. We did lose a lot of great players, um, but we've definitely grown again with the four, we have four new faces this year, but everyone's worked together. So we're excited. This is huge for us to be able to get in here and just be able to field a few ground balls, play some catch, swing a bat, things we can't do at the high school in the gym. This is, the college has helped us out immensely this year by letting us in here. It's the key points, going to the championship, that would be awesome. And yeah, our team usually breaks down. This is a long season. By the end, we're kind of sick of each other here and there, but I think we can go all the way. I think our biggest goal this season is obviously to win the state championship. Um, we've been working really hard all four years, and that would just be a great way to end 
high school just in general. Well, I was actually just talking with the, the girls tonight, and we're hoping to, to have a great, so, a solid season. Our first goal is to make the playoffs and have a home playoff game and go from there, which means we've got to finish in the top eight in our division. Our first broadcast will be next week as the boys baseball team is taking on Bo here at home. For up-to-date scheduling, times, and events for the rest of our sports season, make sure to tune into the Pemi Baker TV's Facebook page as any reschedulings and upcoming events will be there. So for everyone here at PBTV and The Focus, I am Justin Swirsky signing off.